All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, Terra Master sent me over this NAS right here, and this is a unit I really want to be able to recommend, but am having trouble doing so. So this right here is the Terra Master F4 423. They're basically their version of the DS923 or the DS423, somewhere in between those units. And from a hardware perspective, it's got a lot going for it, especially when you look at the price. It is a four bay unit with M.2 NVMe SSD caching, with two built-in 2.5 gigabit LAN ports on the back, and even an HDMI port. It comes with four gigs of RAM. It's also got a built-in pretty powerful Intel Celeron four core CPU with Intel QuickSync. So overall, from a performance and kind of spec perspective, it's got everything you're looking for. Really solid unit. It does have an external power supply, which is pretty much common for all these like four or five bay desktop units. I've only really seen inbuilt power supplies, at least for Synology side, is starting about six bays. So they all pretty much have it. And overall, there's a lot of stuff to really love on this. Having two built-in 2.5 gigabit ports is absolutely awesome. If you compare it to the DS923 Plus right here from Synology, it has only two one gigabit ports. And that is going to be a huge slowdown for you because that is really going to limit the maximum transfer speed you've got. Assuming you've got a wired connection. Now the Synology does have the ability to add in a 10 gig card, but it is a pretty expensive $160 upgrade. Whereas this just has two built-in 2.5 gigabit ports without the 10 gig upgrade. If given the choice between the two, if I had a modern switch that supported 2.5 gigabit, I pretty easily would recommend this just because two 2.5 gigabit ports, especially without having to add in an, a costly upgrade is way better than the option of 10 gig because for the most part, when you're looking at a four hard drive configuration in a RAID 5 setup, your maximum speed, even when the drives are pretty empty, is looking to be somewhere around 500 megabytes per second. And when you've got a 2.5 gigabit connection, you max out at 300 megabytes per second. So you're really not leaving that much on the table, especially once you start doing anything other than just sequential writes. The other thing that really blew me away by this unit was how snappy their operating system was. It was incredibly easy to set up and navigate for somebody who had never touched their software before. What I like to do is not watch a single tutorial or anything and just see what I can do and see how hard it is to set up. I'm in NAS units all the time. I'd actually never touched TerraMaster OS. So this was my first time setting up and it was honestly an absolute breeze. Going through, it set up your storage bowl for you. It really did everything. It just walked you straight through it in a very easy to use manner that I think most people will be able to get through without really any trouble. Overall, it was a great experience from that. And the actual UI was incredibly snappy. It was a good bit faster than Synology DSM-7. It was so snappy. Everything was loading in instantaneously, it felt like. And it felt like a very fluid operating system. And overall, it was very easy to actually navigate. I could find where everything was very quickly and really understand how things went. For the most part, every time you clicked a menu item, it really felt like it was a continuation of the last section. And there were very few instances where you click on a setting and control panel, and all of a sudden a completely different window pops up because that setting is actually controlled in a different part of the operating system with a different program. That's one of those things that's very jarring to new users especially who don't really know their way around it and all of a sudden all these things are popping up and it's hard to find. That was one of my big issues with QNAP was it was just very hard to track in that sense and there were very few instances of that. And while I did find that some configuration things were missing that I would like to be able to do, especially when you're adding complex permissions and really looking at deploying these things in, in kind of an enterprise level, for the small business and home user, I think they really nailed it. By not including a lot of the more complex setup options, it makes it very easy to navigate for somebody who's never used it before and very easy to just set up the NAS and get going. It also had a great security menu that said, hey, these are all the things you've not enabled, even things like snapshots, which I really think was a great idea. It's like, hey, this is super powerful and super protective of your stuff. Make sure to send the users into that. And overall, there were really a lot of great options in there that made it very easy to use. I thought it struck a very easy balance, and I feel like most people could probably deploy this just as easy, if not possibly easier than a Synology NAS, which is something I really think is high praise. And so overall, I was very impressed by how easy TOS was to set up, especially when you're looking at a small business or just a home user who is really just looking for a simple file server to dump their files. 
then the price is actually very good as well. This is one of their more expensive units for this segment, and it comes in at $500, which is $100 cheaper than the DS923 Plus, and the DS923 Plus does not have 2.5 gigabit built into it. And so it does come in a good bit cheaper than that with additional features. From a noise perspective, it was a little bit louder than the 923 Plus, but nothing too bad. You definitely heard a pretty good whirring the entire time, but nothing that would really annoy you too much. And overall, it's got pretty solid build quality across the board, and the drive trays are very easy to pop in and out, and just your simple design that makes it very easy with a complete tool list design. And furthermore, it also came with screws to install 2.5 inch SSDs for SATA SSDs. So it's also compatible with that. All right, and so now with all the praise out of the way, we need to talk about the elephant in the room and that is ransomware. So back in January, 2022 was the biggest case that this happened. There's a massive hit of ransomware across a ton of different NAS brands. ASUS store had some units get hit, QNAP and TerraMaster especially had a lot of cases where units got hit. And the problem with TerraMaster was in that case, it was not necessarily because users had actually gone in and done something insecure. Instead, the NAS itself had used universal plug and play and actually opened up ports. And that was how a lot of these units got hit. So it was literally having the NAS itself opening up to the internet when the user might not have been aware. All right, so if you don't know what universal plug and play is, it's essentially a protocol on the network that allows devices such as NASes or like an Xbox or something to talk to the router and say, hey, I would like you to open up this port for me. And so that way there can be external access to the device. This can get you in a lot of trouble in specific cases because you may have things open to the internet that you do not realize at all because of this protocol. So these Terra Master units were essentially opening themselves up to the internet and that is how they were getting attacked. And so that is very, very difficult they do look like they have updated their OS to try to really focus on that and limit the stuff. And there is now a full secure mode where it does not accept incoming connections from the internet and even doesn't allow you to download certain things. Like I enabled it and tried to install Plex and it would not allow the unit to even talk to the Plex servers. So that was a great add on. I was very happy with that. And I do feel like people who want to use these units as really just a local NAS, I do feel comfortable saying, yeah, if you enable that mode and just use it as only a local NAS, that is a great setup for you because a lot of people, that's all they need. They only need a place to store their files locally and don't care about remote access. But this is just not a NAS operating system. I'm going to be able to recommend you open up to the internet anytime soon. So that is one just tough thing about it. And another thing that I do not like is I went on Terra Masters website and even did some Googling and I've not seen a bounty program. If you don't know what a bounty program is, a bounty program essentially allows security researchers or even just basically hackers to go in and instead of exploiting a vulnerability they find, they can actually just give it to TerraMaster or whoever the company is that owns it. And they will pay them just a cash summary saying, hey, thank you for telling us about this. We are going to be able to close this patch. And so that way it's a bit of a win-win. The person who finds it can actually make money from it in a legitimate way. It does not have to worry about legal implication or anything like that. And the actual company keeps ransomware from occurring. After QDAP got hit, they went through and added in a bounty program. However, I've not been able to find one on TerraMaster site. And so that is just not a good indication on what the company is focusing on. They clearly have not learned from their lesson because if they had, they absolutely would be putting up a bounty program of at least something. Even if it was not a ton, it's really important to have that because focusing and having an entire department that is really trained and knows how to actually receive bugs and especially security issues is crucial. And so there's one other thing I did want to mention that makes it very hard to recommend TOS. I went through and I was testing out the operating system, running everything, and I had enabled secure OS, basically where it's a lockdown mode where it does not accept incoming connections except from very specific places or local networks. I then shut it down using the menu. I hit shut down and then plugged it back in to film this video. And when it booted up, it was basically saying, Hey, install these drives. It somehow lost the operating system. I have no idea what happened. I don't know if I did anything wrong, 
but I certainly never hit any button that said, hey, reset the thing. I may be able to find it, but I had just spent a few minutes debugging it. And yeah, it somehow soft reset itself and wanted me to reinstall TOS on the thing. All right, so really quick, there's an update from Will from the Future on the actual issue where it was going into a soft reset. So I rebooted it and kind of after the video was trying to figure out what happened because I had not seen that before. And I rebooted it and it came back online. So I have no idea what happened there, but it looks like a couple times it booted, it just was not recognizing the disk at all, which is really not a great look. And it was actually prompting me to do a full reinstallation of it and was gonna format the drives. Luckily, after I rebooted it again, it did come back on and has found it and I've got all my files on here. It still does not leave a very good feeling and I don't know what happened, honestly. It's not like I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to NASes and I didn't hit any buttons that would have prompted that. The only drive that was part of the system was plugged in and I didn't have any NVMe drives or anything else that could have kind of caused anything. So I'm not really sure what happened there, but that could just be a bug with the new security isolation mode maybe. I do not know, but that is just one piece I needed to throw out there. All right, back to the rest of the video. Now that being said, if you wanna do something like a TrueNAS build with this thing, they do allow you to install third-party operating systems on this. So that may be a great solution for you. It's got the HDMI port in the back, which means you can just really easily install a different operating system on it. And so if you wanna install TrueNAS on this thing, you can put up to 32 gigs of RAM in this. You can have yourself a pretty powerful box. You can use one of the built-in M.2 NVMe slots to actually have your operating system on there and then use the other one as something like a layer two arc for NVMe caching. So that is a great use for this unit. And you know, it's just going to be very secure. You're not going to be able to have external access to this thing, except if you use something like Nextcloud or anything else. TrueNAS is really built in as a NAS, a local NAS. And then you can install stuff on top of that. And that's honestly what makes it so secure. By not having people be able to access it remotely, unless they figure out how to set up for themselves and want to have a VPN solution or whatever, you really can secure yourself a lot. Because if you don't have any extra access to the NAS and you're not using universal plug and play or anything, and so nobody can really get in, it becomes really, really hard to get hacked. In general, it requires either one, somebody to come in on a laptop and do something, which is just very unlikely to happen, or two, it requires a device on the network to actually start doing it. But both of those things are way harder than some Yahoo just going in and scanning FTP ports to see what is open and basically brute forcing their way in. All right, so that was my first look at TerraMaster. I think they've got really good hardware and I think it's a great form factor, but it may just be one of those things that you purchase the TerraMaster box through them and then install your own operating system on top of it, just so that way you don't have to worry about whatever security is out there. Go and leave any other tutorials you like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.